Oh, Merry Christmas. We have the biggest gift in the world for you. No, it's not the No Dax Columns t-shirt, although that's available in the store. Uh, we have SQL for your semantic models. What? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, I can't wait to show it to you. Okay, so <clears throat> Microsoft rolled out, when was this? Uh, just like a couple weeks ago, this one lake integration for semantic models. What the heck does that mean? Well, ha ha ha, this is so cool. What it means is you could take your semantic model that you're already loading, that like that Power BI data set that you publish out to the service, you make sure that it refreshes. Well, you can now hit this with SQL commands. Don't believe me? Wait till you see how, how you do this, how easy it is, all right? So for this, to make sure that, you know, there's no magic up the sleeve, I'm going to go and I'm going to create a brand new workspace, okay? Whoops, workspaces, create new workspace. And we're going to call this uh, a One Lake Semantic Model. All right, so nothing, n nothing getting along, you know, no magic. This is just a regular workspace, right? Hit apply. Now I'm going to go in. You notice that it's inside of a premium uh, space. There are some prerequisites on this. Um, you you me need to make sure that your workspace is at Power BI Premium or Fabric Capacity, and large semantic model store mat has to be enabled for the model. Now, two different things. We can turn this on inside of the workspace settings. I think it's in Power BI... Uh, maybe premium. Yep, premium. And then so large semantic models. So you could turn it on here and hit apply. Or we can do it when we're publishing our our, our model. So I'm going to pull up my model. So this is the model we're going to be using. This is just a small sliver so that we can actually see it refresh in real time. So you can actually see this. So there's no, you're not going to see any cuts or edits here. This is live stuff that we're going to be doing. So I'm going to publish this to my uh one like semantic model workspace. I'm going to hit select and it's going to publish this out to the service, right? So again, no hot takes, no splits, no cuts. We're going to be showing that it all worked out. Great. So I want to go ahead and open that up, sign in, and it's going to show my model. Okay. Hey, great. We're working. Everything's good there, right? So head back over to my workspace and I can see that my model's set up. Now, what was the requirement that I had to do? The model has to be configured to be uh, a large data set. So I'm going to go into my settings. And like I said, I could have set it up on the uh, the workspace, but I'm going to set this up on my large, uh, on my model itself. Okay. Kind of recommend doing it model by model. No reason to take up additional memory if you don't need it. Uh, there's some back end performance issues that you can cause if everything is a large model. So if you don't need to be a large model, don't make a large model. Okay, simple as that. Okay, so this is going to convert that. I get a little pop up here that notifies me when my semantic model is ready. So that that success is done. And here is our uh, our, our new feature that we need to have here, and that is our one lake integration preview. All right. You can automatically write data important to your semantic model, a table to delta tables in one lake. Make sure your semantic model includes one or more imported tables, okay? So clearly and obviously, this only works for import tables, right? If, if you're not importing it and it's a direct query to something else, there's nothing in the middle for it, you know, for you to import or create out there. So it has to be an import model in this situation. So I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to hit apply. Now, if we look through this, and I'll post this link down below, you're going to see that you you, know, you need to have uh, the large semantic model turn on. Uh, you could do it. Uh, oh, you have to make sure that you've you've turned this on inside your global tenant. So that's something that I've already done, but you know, we'll, we'll make sure that that is enabled uh, for that to work and that other people can work with this data, okay? And then the big key is we need to make sure that we refresh our model. If I go out right now and try to look for this data, it's not going to be there. So I'm not going to be able to have this. So I need to now now go back in and I need to refresh the model. How the heck you do that? Well, in my case, 
I've got a, uh, I have to configure a gateway because it's connecting to uh, a server on-prem. So uh, I've got that all set up. I hit apply, good. Now I have to go into my workspace and I got to hit refresh. And like, here's where like the magic is either going to happen or not. Like if I screwed up and I don't have my gate, my server up and running, which I should, right? Like one, one should have this, uh, this will fail if that, if that didn't work right. Fingers crossed. Come on now. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Well, actually while that's running, Oh, Hey, look at that. It's all done. So now, ha 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 look what I can do. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to say new. And now I am in my Power BI experience. So all the items that we see inside of here are Power BI content, right? Well, I don't want to have Power BI content. I want to go more options and I want to create a lake house in this situation because I'm going to be going to get data from one lake, right? So I'm going to say lake house. We're going to call this uh, one lake semantic model. And you can't have un or you can't have spaces, so we'll put an underscore in there. So I go to create. It's going to create my lake house, and this is going to take just a couple seconds. Bing, 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 boom. All right, so it's going to come up. Come to me. Now, I can. Now, you have a couple options. When it, when it comes to getting uh, uh, content that's in one lake, you can either go and grab it and put it into your files section, and then you have to like import it into your tables, or you can directly put it into tables. So we're going to click on the little ellipses here, and we're gonna say a new shortcut, because that content exists already in Delta Lake. It's already in one lake, so it's in a Delta file. So I'm gonna say new shortcut, and it's gonna say, where is it? Is it an internal source or external? In this case, I'm saying internal and oh, look at that. What is the first source that I can go grab my content from? Oh, it, it's, uh, wait, this is my lake house. I gotta find my semantic model. Wait, so filter, semantic model. Where did it go? Why is it in here? Oh. Am I going too quick? I think I might have gone too quick. So this is this is this is like a, creating a, a link to my own sh my own uh, one link, and that's no good, right? So I needed to go from the uh, the file that's out there, right? Now I I don't think. Okay, refresh them all. Oh, and export to one like. Okay, so we're going to fire up SSMS. Management Studio. And oopsies. Got to go back into my one like. And now here's the big thing. Uh, manage settings. Ah, I forgot about this. It's all, it's all good. If I go to premium. I've got my workspace connection down here. Okay, so this is what I need to have. So I click on that. And I go over to Management Studio. And I'm going to change. I'm connected to Analysis Services Engine. I'm going to paste in my connection string. And I'm going to change in uh, Azure Active Directory with MFA. I'm going to put in my username. Username. It's going to sign me in. I'm going to choose my ID. Let out, let out. All right. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to be using this code right here. So it's going to be export Delta type full objects uh, database. All right. And then the database name is the name of the database that I just put in. So tab back, tab back. So let's go. So you can see. Here is my semantic model that was created by creating the lake house. So that was my, that was my, uh, that was the lake house semantic model. That's my, the model that was auto created. This is the model that I want to run that command against. So I'm going to right click on this and click on new query. And I'm going to say this is an MDX query. Oh, wait a minute. It's an MDX or XMLA. Oh. Is it this? 
I always forget. Semantic model small run. Okay, run is complete. Oh, it cannot be found. Really? All right, so maybe it's not the uh, MDX query. Maybe it's the XMLA query. Right, paste in the same thing, running. Cannot be found. Okay. I don't know what was exactly wrong with that, but that now is successful. All right, we have a success here. So it is an XML query. Silly me. I head back into my uh, model. Oops, I go back into my one leg. I open up my one leg. Oh, and isn't that cool? Did you see that? I've got, you could see Here's the, here's the one like that I created, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Here's the one like I created. Here's the SQL endpoint that was automatically created. And here's the semantic model that goes along with it. Okay. Now, if I go back into my one like, and I say, okay, create a new shortcut. I go, I, I click on from within internal again. And now this time I see semantic model small, right? So this is the guy I'm trying to import in. So I go ahead and I select it and I click on next. And now all of the tables are available for me to load into my model. So I'm just gonna, you know, what? I'm gonna select them all, right? You saw how long that took to load. Let's take a look at how long it's gonna take to load these in, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and edit the, I could edit these, right? I could go in and edit names or whatever. I don't wanna do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and create. You're going to see how quickly this goes, right? Success, 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 in progress, in progress, success. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Boom. All done. Now, look at this. Look at this, isn't it? Isn't this awesome? Now, I've got all the tables that I have in my semantic model are being kept and made available inside of one leg. So now, uh, I, I could just do... Uh, Open a notebook, a new notebook. Boom. Shaka laka, shaka laka, shaka laka, shaka boom, shaka laka. Look at this. Look at this. That is your old T SQL right there, baby. Well, it's not T SQL, but it's SQL, right? It's, it's Spark SQL. So I can hit run. And five, four, three, two, one. Boom. Oh, come on. got to spin up the cluster and all that good stuff. Uh, but it, you basically have SQL available now for your notebooks. Now, there is a limitation. I'm going to call out. Oh, there it is, right? So there we go. Now I can go ahead and I can write any SQL I want to query the data that's in my semantic model. And I only have to do my loads once because I am loading from the tables that are in my semantic model into my lake house. So that lake house, those delta files that are in my lake house, are being loaded one time and they're being consumable from both sides. So my data scientists can go ahead and they can hit all the tables inside of my data model, run any query they want. I do not have to worry about them going in and putting any pressure whatsoever on my semantic model because they're off on their own compute, hitting those delta files, doing their own thing. That's all good, okay? Now, a handful of limitations that we want to be aware of um, uh, inside here. Uh, okay, so there's some data type things. They don't support bring your own key, and um, and this is this is the big one that I, I kind of like. I was less than thrilled by, is, but it's only in preview, right? So it's it's just during the preview, but you can't use your SQL endpoint. So you know, I mean, it's a preview feature, but what a Christmas gift! Is 
we can we can go from our semantic model that we manage, load, and operate and use on a daily basis. We with just a few clicks, we can export that data out. We can make that accessible by people and make this consumable. I mean, frankly, this is super exciting. Uh, if you have questions, uh, uh, please leave a comment down below. Heck, if you found this insightful or useful or you're very grateful for the gift, please turn on that subscribe button, hit like, uh, share it with your friends and family. It helps me out. I really appreciate it. If you do want to support the channel, order one of my overpriced t-shirts. Uh, it's going to take a long time to get them. They're crazy slow, but you will support the channel and I'd really appreciate it if you bought one. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. I hope you enjoy this gift as much as I'm going to enjoy it, uh, Inside Solutions. Uh, you guys have a great day. Peace. Bye now. Acre Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.